here and tell us about her experience with epilepsy. So without further ado, let's give it up for Alyssa D'Amico. I have epilepsy for 25 years and is still active, but much less severe than it used to be. I was diagnosed at the age of six, 1994. A virus happened to be going around the class, and of course I had to get it. But not one doctor was able to distinguish what type of virus it was. Therefore, my mother was told to give child's aspirin to me. The fever was going from 104 to above. Then suddenly, the first seizure happened. The only thing I can remember about that night is squiggling, saying, Mom, make them stop. Mommy, Mommy, make them stop. As I got a spinal tap done only about seven, eight times. But sometimes you don't have a choice. It was discovered that the epilepsy comes from the left temporal lobe and that scar tissue formed most likely during the virus. I have to be thankful for the principle I had because I don't know how many private schools would allow you to stay if you need to go to the hospital so many times and had three brain surgeries. The third brain surgery uh, ended a little oddly, and you'll hear a poem about it. Yes, the poem is telling the truth about that. Now, I'll say 2011, 2012, once again, the seizures were out of control. They were going over time, generalizing, and happening at least once a day. That was in the hospital almost all the time. My doctor first wanted to try a ketogenic diet. I'm not able to succeed at that. <laughs> then we tried things. A new medication came out that year that can cause blindness. So I had to go to a specialized eye doctor. Unfortunately, I wasn't qualified for I don't have full peripheral vision. Then suddenly the vagus nerve stimulator was implanted. Considering the vagus nerve stimulator, it helped me a lot. And now during a complex partial, I don't even go fully unaware. And it lasts for a much shorter period of time. There are three quotes that I taught students throughout different, different jobs and tell people who don't believe in themselves. One is from a professor of abnormal psychology. There's no such thing as a normal human being. There are two others. Winners never quit, quitters never win. I choose to be a winner. Every day, in every way, I get better and better, sir. Excuse me, that's from karate class I took when young. <laughs> now, let me get to my book, Short Circuit, An Epileptic Journey. Poetic memoir, not only having to do with epilepsy emergencies, and neurosurgery, but also having to do with love, family, and friends. Singing a song, pheno, chemical compound, barbitol, barbiturate with white crystalline powder used to sedate. Phenobarbital, an antidepressant, anti-epileptic, sedative, addicting medication. Overdoses can be fatal. I am medically addicted, sometimes when needed. On it for 11,010 days, and it ain't over yet. I feel nervous today. Should I take an extra 16.1 or 64.5? What do you think? Pupils dilated, eyes watery, slightly sedated. But don't worry, no one will notice. After all, we'll eventually digest. Do I want to drink? Only if willing to die. Or skip a dose, have a convulsive and cause controversy. Man, I'm dizzy. Is it the medication or me? Somebody give me a seat, a bite to eat. I'm shaking like a leaf. Fuzzy vision viewing double like Vincent van Gogh painting. Depression fluctuating on and off. Leave me alone. Less social. Crying of the past or clear-headed. It can happen either way. Listening to specific songs, hearing people say, those are so depressing. How can they help? Wandering to myself. What is life worth again? Why am I here? Then suddenly my pieces get put back together. My memory is perfect, yet others say no. Medication can interfere, and don't forget, you have an LD, learning disability, I will never agree. Imagination, give me a golden medal. Oh, look at that monster over there. 
don't worry, I know it's a hallucination. I had a dream, you wanna know what it was about? Should I turn it into a poem or story? What do you think? And then, did that really happen or is it a wish? Hearing voices in my head, lyrics from songs, are these oars or am I going overdose? It can happen either way. Acting like a nocturnal animal falling asleep at four o'clock, unsure of fact or fiction, delusional. Oh well, here we go again. I'm only the second highest in the hospital I attend. Lowering it by just a bit, causing confusion, dizziness, psychiatric seizures to occur. Then all of a sudden people say, she's more quick, more aware, more clear. But in real life, I feel no difference. It's been so long. That's why I'm singing this song. I barely want to come off. Fino, Barb, et al. The next poem is Waiting. Waiting in the emergency room once again at the first hospital attended, Long Island Jewish, a rectangular room with blue walls, seats connected to it, and an administrative desk to the left. Young girl wondering, what was going on around her? Looking at this man, all leaning all the way to his right, glasses falling off and fingers twitching on and off with an adult next to him. It must have been his daughter, pointing. Mom, what's wrong with him? Don't point, that's not polite. It's just a little something. Talking to her mom, falling asleep on her arm, Sometimes needing to wait until 12 o'clock, other times until 5 a.m. Her father would go to the desk and say, is she going to be admitted next? Then suddenly, her name was called. Blood need to be taken. Only thing by intern that forgot one thing, a tube at the end. So blood starts shooting in all different directions. A nurse then came, pushed him and said, get out of my way. Catching the blood just on time, asking what band-aid do you want, of course she chose the Power Rangers. Being brought into another room, lying down, falling asleep with sweet dreams, woken up in the Children's Neurology Center to put a hep lock in, in case a seizure was to occur. Oh no, it's not time for another EEG. With electrodes being creamed onto the frontal, Temporal and occipital lobe. Waiting there, speaking to her mom and the technician, finally done, hearing, don't chew gum, take all jewelry off, and remember not to touch it. Wires plugged into a rectangular box with two cameras, one on the left, one on the right, to record when a seizure was happening. And EEG showing what location it may be. Father would go home and mother would stay to see what the doctor would have to say the next day. This was a routine, continuously seen. Now I will say the poem about my third surgery. Name of it is Caught in a Storm. Wind is just a coming and it's begin to snow. Lying in the snow with a bar on my left, flowers to my right, and Alice in Wonderland, hiding from these hideous creatures, when in real life, none of this can be said. In real life, I was lying in an operating room with all white walls, a bright light shining down, and six doctors, a neurosurgeon behind me, and nurse practitioner promising to be there. One doctor was Dr. Barr. Other was Dr. Bloom. And Allison Wonderland was Allison, the nurse practitioner, promising to be there. Need to repeat the alphabet to stay away from speech, suddenly unable to do it. That's when Allison Wonderland jumped out from behind the bushes to ask a few secret questions. What might they be? You'll find out and see. Allison, what is your nickname? IA. Allison. What does I stand for? Italian American. Allison, who do you like more, InSync or the Backstreet Boys? InSync is InStinct. The Backstreet Boys are better. 
every doctor giggled away. Then again, we were only two females in the room, so who knew better than us? Suddenly, it was time to stop because the neurosurgeon felt like it was getting too close to speech. As falling asleep, a present was given. Hearing, real slim shady. That's true, whole truth. <laughs> now, let's go into high school. Horrible high school. First attended. The, the first high school attended, the workers were unprofessional, except for three. Every time a seizure happened in the nurse's office, she was a disrespectful, irresponsible, smart ass. <coughs> Laughing at or ignoring me, students would walk in saying, what's wrong? Why isn't she helping? My shoulders would go up silently, or I talk with slow voice and say, I don't know. There were social fights in between us. She acted like the Wicked Witch of the West, putting her index finger in front of her eye, saying, I see you for a minute or two. My mother went up to try and help, but it only made things worse. Complaints were put in, but that didn't matter. Even making statements to me in the hallway when I was fine, skipping or changing class. Never got, in, got into any trouble there. Thank you, Christ the King, only in regard to that. Alone. Alone happened 2011, 2012, before the seizures were under control. Alone, dropped to the ground with no sound, surrounded by darkness, not a person around. To help with these twitches and turns, times are in fast. You never know how long a seizure could last. Hours are too long. Somebody come before life is gone. Sent to the emergency room with people all around, barely able to understand a word or sound. Going into a deep sleep, woken up alone in bed, wandering. What happened? Until noticing hair became ultra long in all different colors, red, blue, yellow, green. These wires run tests to help the treatment, which would be best. How long will it take? No one knows. An EEG can last hours, days, weeks. But try to remember to have no fright and that everything will be all right. Believe in yourself. Don't lose faith. Something will be found one day, and everything will be OK. The next poem is Different Girl, and I don't know how many times I rewrote this in my life. I am a different girl from a different world, a different race with a different face. I'm from a different, from a different dimension a, and a different case. I'm unknown species, unique in many ways. I have an imagination that runs wild. I'm able to fly because dreams are coming true. I glow in the dark. I am filled with ultimate powers and have a real heart, don't have much to say or do. Some people of the world are prejudiced against me because they don't understand what they see. I am a different girl from a different world. The next poem, Epilepsy, was published several times before the book came out. And after the book came out, it was published by Canada. Hmm. Epilepsy is a part of me. You can take it or leave it. It may not go away. And a matter of fact, it may be here to stay. Am I okay? Yes, I am. Standing up straight, facing the reality of life. Emotions do fluctuate. Life is like a roller coaster, going up and down. Researching what a seizure is to remind myself, when happens, I'll be back to normal, whatever that means. Epilepsy is a part of me, which makes me unique. Keep my head up and never give up. Because winners never quit, quitters never win, and I choose to be a winner. One thing I'll say to conclude this is, um, in these days, epilepsy is still very stereotypical on TV, media, even YouTube makes fun of it. So. People are only thinking that there's such thing as convulsions, generalized, grand wall, when real life 
there's more than 14 different kinds of seizures. And when I meet a new person, I'll say, the first question I'll get is, oh, you fall. Oh, yeah, you must have grand mal seizures. No, I don't. I have complex partial. I know it's going to happen. I don't fall. Strobe lights don't cause seizures with every person, nor video games. But that's immediate thoughts in people's heads. And I, when it comes to jobs, was told to lie by doctors, not to say that you have a disability, or else you may not be hired. So basically, they get a little fear after hiring me. Usually, I get to stay. I'm pretty sure that goes for other people in my case as well. When it comes to epilepsy, I'm an advocate. I want people to know what epilepsy is. Not for it to be a vocabulary word, but for them to know e at least enough of types of seizures. And I am willing to go tell stories of myself, explain and teach epilepsy as I did in the undergraduate class this summer, taught about epilepsy, neurosurgery, uh, testings, and psychological effects of medication and that. Besides that, even in 10th grade, I made a speech of what epilepsy is and did it for my, for my school, as well as the principal being really kind in publishing a little article in the newspaper. Then again, she was always great. Okay, so what I am is I just want to be an advocate in any possible way. And even if it has to say these poems. Why did I make this book? I made this book not only for more awareness, but for people like myself or other neurological conditions to have more faith in themselves and know that they're not alone. If anybody has any question for me whatsoever, I'm always willing to answer, whether it has to do with 1994, in which I have many memories, neurosurgeries that has happened, if any other seizure happened, or so forth. That's the least I'll say. Thank you. <laughs> any questions, any questions? No questions this time? You're not like the undergraduate class I taught, I guess. <laughs> they, they, they got personal immediately. All right, everyone, that concludes tonight's show. Thank you all so much for coming out here with us. Um, we have two more shows on January 9th. We're going to be talking about autism. So if you're interested in learning more, you can come to that show. Uh, and on February 11th, we have the Huntington's disease. Um, and they will actually be putting together some dance numbers. And you guys will get in a little exercise yourself. So bring your tennis shoes to that one. Um, and I think we'll stick around for maybe five minutes here. If you want to purchase Alyssa's um, book, she'll be around. There are